Hi everyone, welcome to Liquid Brain. So recently I'm analyzing mutation data for TCGA cancer database. I wanted to follow the categorization according to a paper. So in this paper, they try to group mutation in TB53 into a different category as shown by the table here. So I'm not going to showcase all of the mutation classification, but I particularly struggle with the, how they define mischance within log 2 or log 3 and replacing a residue with another polarity or charge. So this is obviously had to do with the amino acid properties so to see whether the amino acid is polar or charge or um, not at all. So from this paper, I kind of got the idea they mentioned somewhere here in the amino acid classification that they can divide them into four groups. First is the polar, hydropopic, and charge. We can further divide into positively charged or negatively charged. So I need to group the protein changes in the TB53 mutation into these four groups and then to check whether the mutation will lead to the changes in the polarity or charge or not. So let's see how I'm going to do it with R. So firstly, I have already downloaded the mutation data from the CBIO portal, the prostate cancer, and here I get the data mutations extended file. So from here, we have already can get like 97 column of it. There are a lot of the information inside. So um, at the end of the day, I will try to get something like this. I'm particularly interested to see how the changes in the amino acid will lead to any polarity or charge changes, right? So this is all contained into the HGVHP column that I would try to split this into like amino acid 1, amino acid 2 and the rest are like the, the number. The number are not really important because they have already a, a column that is called protein partition. So we can always check here. So here I, I, I have to make sure they contain only unique tumor chamber barcode, only 61 mutation data. The first thing is I try to split it into the text and the number. This is have to rely on this library, DPLYR, and then we'll get it into the pure text and also pure numbers so from here we can try to mutate which means that we create a new column refer to amino acid part and then the amino acid position with all the number so next thing is from here a, a part i want to divide the first amino acid and the second amino acid so from here we can use the so-called substrings this is guy um it's, it's just most simplest way that i can do um it's very easy we just need to calculate where we want to start so i want to start at the third position and and the next one is the where we want to stop i want to stop at the number five here yeah with this we can extract the short name of the first amino acid and then you let's say you want to know more you can try to put a question mark it will appear in this column here so you can try to have a look here let's say for the po amino acid position you want to deduct the last two uh, that you can do something like this but i'm not going to do this uh, because we have already have the protein position in the mutation file so after this will be the next amino acid so we got two mutation data column that is the amino acid one yeah and amino acid two now we want to create a data frame for amino acid properties. So this is the four type of the amino acid that I got it from the paper here. So I basically just copy here and then put it into the list here. So now the things we need to uh, combine them. Right? So the first thing we cannot just simply combine because they're having different lengths. So let's say we combine directly, um, it will be something like this. Okay, so let's have a look. Combine like this, we will see something like this. So positively charged, I have only two, but they just repeat and repeat uh, for the rest of the column because they want to make it into the same length. So this is not what we want. In order to advise this, we have to estimate the length, the maximum length of all these four lists. Okay, so we know that this is nine here and then try to um, extend the length of 
the rest of the list so you will see that let's say the negative charge i have like two amino acid but the rest we still assign something called an non-available here and then now we combine we will get um we will get something like this so this is like what we want we won't have like a uh, repeat and repeat okay so the next thing is uh, i don't really want to show in this way this is the so-called white data table uh, i want to show them into like long data table where the type of the amino acid will be one column and the second column will be the amino acid so this is the so-called we want to convert it from the white data firm to long data firm so we rely on this library tidy r and actually the other way to do this so for all of the things that i have done so far we have a lot of other way to do also so come back to this this is very simple we just need to gather and this is the uh, data firm and then we want to gather them into two columns so first is the type and then the secondly is the amino acid and then um, this is like all the four columns that i want to put together so i will have something like this yeah it's very nicely convert into the type and amino acid okay and then now i want to remove all the na here okay so we have only 20 amino acid and now the thing is i want to merge this type into the mutation data file here Oh, sorry this is, is the mutation data tp53 so next one i want to create um, a column that match let's say um is the amino acid this one the type of the amino acid one will be referring to this this data firm so the thing that i do is just try to merge them together so i merge the mutation data tp53 and the amino acid character here and then uh, the the column that they have to match is the amino acid one and also the aa column in the in the aa character and we try to uh, rename the column as amino acid one type okay this rely on the library we shape and then um, we do the same for the amino acid two number two um, we can have a look here yeah yeah so we have the amino acid type 1 and amino acid type 2 nicely done so now we know the type for the first amino acid before mutation and after mutation so i want to put another column to show that um whether the changes will lead to um the changes into the charge or polarity changes right mm, the last day, they both like uh, change from polar to charge definitely that it changes but let's say the hypopropic change to the hypopropic one i will i will assume that they are not having any changes in the charge of polarity so this is how i'm going to do i will just do something called if else so if else is that let's say the mutation data is actually the condition match um here i will put them as both hydrophobic or else i would just say this is no so this is how to do here and then um, you should uh, to be able to see it from the column here yeah you like them both are hydrophobic there is the both hydrophobic <laughs> okay so the next thing is i try to rearrange the data frame so that uh, they all put together and look nicely and this is i check the column and then i manually uh, assign all these things here so now we can try to have a look again here okay so this is exactly what i'm show uh, in the excel file just now this is what i have done right so um I have the HUVHP column and the first amino acid, second amino acid, and and so on. So HUVHP, first amino acid, the amino acid after the mutation, and uh, and the position and the type for the amino acid one and amino acid two, and whether they have changes or not. 
yeah so this is the things that I have done for this part and then I can proceed to, um, like to the um, let's say I want to do survival analysis referring to the condition where uh, is there any changes in the analysis that I can just use this information so that's all for my sharing today so um, this is not really something very big but um, it's quite useful when we want to deal with all the data in R so um, so a uh, big summary of what I have done so the first thing is split the data we can try to use GSAP from the library DPRYR and then we try to um, assign new column using mutate function and um, let's say we want to extract certain text we will just put substring here and then if let's say we want to create a new data frame with different lengths we can try to run this code first which means that we get the maximum length of all the list and try to extend the length of all the other shorter lists before we do the combine okay so the next thing is convert the data frame from white to long uh, we can use the tidy r uh, gather and then put it into two new columns refer to the four column that i mentioned before okay so um the next thing is to rename using the reship from the old column name to the new column name and lastly um that is the if else i mean let's say the new this is the new column and let's say the condition of other column is like this we will assign it the name like this if not then we'll assign like this okay and lastly i just try to rearrange the column in the data frame so that i can put all the information together so that's all for my sharing today um thanks for watching and i will see you next time bye